Good evening and welcome as we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. Uh, Father Tom Hayes is presiding, uh, celebrating liturgy with us today. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. <clears throat> Sisters and brothers, on this second Sunday of Easter, we use this ritual of sprinkling to remind us of our own baptism as we renew our baptismal promises during this season. May the Lord give us the strength to be faithful followers of the Lord. And may Almighty God cleanse us of our sin, and through the Eucharist we celebrate, make us worthy to sit at his table in his heavenly kingdom. Amen.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace that you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they've been washed, by whose spirit they've been reborn, and by whose blood they've been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, but had they held everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bringing the proceeds of the sale and putting them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Become the foundation of our house. By the Lord has this been done. How wonderful to be
reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through the water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came. He stood in their midst. He said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. And so the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, put my hand into his side, I will not believe so now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, and although the doors were locked, stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Bring your hand, put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. And Jesus answered and said to him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you've seen me? 
Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I like to remind people that it takes 40 days of Lent to get ready for Easter, but it takes 50 days of Easter for it to sink in. You see that in both passages in the scriptures today. People who are trying to make sense of what happened. We realize that Jesus had gotten himself in trouble with religious authorities especially those that were in cahoots with the Roman forces. And as a responsibility of those religious authorities delegated by the Romans to make sure that there was order and make sure that the taxes were raised to support Rome. And when Jesus uh, goes about his ministry, he's uh, expanding the understanding of who God is. God isn't the officials at the temple. God is present in different ways. And that God doesn't show favorites. So Jesus, you know, reaches out to lepers and tax collectors and sinners and tells people their sins are forgiven. Well, the authorities found that outrageous. If you want to have your sins forgiven, you have to come to the temple. And little by little, <clears throat> he knew that his uh, message of the kingdom of God was causing conflict. And so time and time again, as he was approaching that holy city of Jerusalem, he was warning them, his disciples, that he was going to be opposed. They might even kill him. But do not be afraid, because I put my trust in my father, and no matter what happens, it's going to be okay. Well, when it did happen, of course, <laughs> the two disciples, for the vast majority of them, just took off. They were so devastated. And that's when you see here in this story in John's Gospel today about this uh, very first day of the week, this very first Easter. John's tradition says that Jesus came back to them that night, as we just read, offering them forgiveness, peace, shalom in the Hebrew concept of peace means be at right relationship with God in all ways. Be at peace. He didn't come back to say, where were you when I needed you? <laughs> he came back to say, relax. We got through this. And my father has vindicated all that I have said to you. Because I'm not in the realm of the dead. I'm in the realm of the living. Hard to believe. He breathes on them, and that's a way of expressing that the spirit of Jesus is now being sent into the people. And he says, you know, if you forgive people their sins, they're, they're, they're forgiven. If you hold them back, then you're stuck. And he's saying that to, other, to the disciples. You, know? you need to forgive one another. You need to stop holding back your forgiveness. Because when that happens, people get stuck. <laughs> Before we had a ritual of penance, sacrament of penance, that's what people did in the early church. They confessed their sins to one another. And that's how God's forgiveness was mediated in the early church for human beings forgiving one another. And that's how that happened. And it still happens if we allow it to happen. It doesn't happen if you're holding a grudge. <laughs> or if you have hardness in your heart, you can't let go of your hurt. 
then you're blocking the Spirit of God. What about this question of belief? Thomas usually gets a bad press, you know, doubting Thomas. But there's nothing in here that says Thomas was, you know, evil or obstinate. Different personalities need more time to accept this phenomena of resurrection. And so Thomas has to go through this little, uh, how would you say, <clears throat> exercise <laughs> in uh, learning about belief, setting his doubts aside. And he becomes an example for us down through the centuries because all of us have doubts from time to time, do we not? You know? I remember there have been times in my life as a priest I'm convinced there is no God. <laughs> you know, Things can get so bad. But the reality is, you know, being able to uh, process this mystery of the resurrection of Christ takes time. <clears throat> Jesus preached the kingdom, the kingdom of God. What it would be like if God were in charge and people paid attention to what God expected of us. You know, the kingdom of God rather than the kingdom of the Roman Empire or the kingdom of the United States or whatever. And when the people have to take a second look at that, it says, what is it that gets in the way of the kingdom of God? I suggest it's a ego and injustice. See, we're often told that we should be, accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And that's a good thing. That makes for personal transformation, to soften your heart, to be an experience, an example of the love of Christ, to experience that yourself, like on this Divine Sunday, Divine Mercy Sunday, experience forgiveness. It's a blessing. Accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. But that's only half the story, because the other half of the story is have to accept Jesus as your political Lord and Savior. <laughs> not just your personal but it's your responsibility to accept Jesus as the one who sets the tone of how we are to live with one another and you see that happening in the first reading where the disciples are sharing what they have to make sure nobody goes without or you see it in the second reading where they're trying to encourage poor Thomas who's having his struggles but the reality is you know <clears throat> The commandment is that we should love one another as I have loved you. Not because I've loved you, but in the same way that I've loved you, unconditionally. And so in our personal transformation, accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you have to surrender your ego, your self-centeredness, your narcissism. You have to be compassionate. And compassion is that which takes place when Justice takes root. It's the political side of the message of Jesus. Justice for all. Like our Holy Fathers always reminding us, you know, church should be like a field hospital taking care of people, not lording it over them. We should have people who are conscious of those on the fringe. We need to have an experience of community or it's not me and Jesus. It's me and Jesus and all of us with each other. And that makes all the difference. So, as I say, <clears throat> it's going to take 50 days. <laughs> this is only the first week. <laughs> Second Sunday of Easter. Chew on that for this week. <laughs> Accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Accept Jesus as your political Lord and Savior. Because one without the other isn't the whole story. And it's important for us to uh, process all of this, even when it seems beyond belief. To profess our faith, <clears throat> I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Prompted by God's Spirit, let us place our intentions before the community. For the church, that it recognizes the beauty of a diverse community of believers who, despite differences of language, class, ethnicity, gender, expression, and sexual orientation, share the one heart and one mind of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world governments, that they share resources to each according to their need to create a more equitable and just society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who doubt their place in the kingdom of God, may they see the love of the risen Christ reflected in the love of those around them. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Vincent's community, that we may work to ensure that the needy in our own community are supported spiritually, emotionally, physically, and financially, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, needy, and grieving among us, and for Leif Absin, and all those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our Book of Intentions, and for those that we hold in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, Spirit of the living God, dwelling within us and in all of creation, well up within us the energy to put into practice the faith we profess, so that our relationship with you might be expressed by our relationship with each other. Make our prayer through Christ our Lord.
My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands through praise and glory for our good and the Holy Church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, we may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who's taken away the sin of the world. By dying, he's destroyed our death. And by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. The heavenly powers, the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, a fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew. They may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many for the forgiveness of sin, so do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. So humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world Bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all who minister. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. <clears throat> and have mercy on us all, we pray. They were the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse the blessed apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, you may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and our hearts through Christ our Lord. I want to express a word of gratitude, well, a few words of gratitude, to all our liturgical ministers, hospitality members, choir members, and you, our assembly, who contribute to making our Holy Week and Easter liturgies so beautiful and safe. Each year, as a community, we offer the opportunity to participate in letter writing to congressional members advocating for particular concerns. This year, we encourage people to write asking that the enhanced child tax credit become permanent and to increase global funding for nutrition for, um, for countries struggling with the pandemic. Information on this letter writing will go out electronically and also hard copies will be available next weekend. We usually encourage people to stay in the parish hall to write their letter. Of course, we don't want to do that these days, but we will provide the resources so you can. Father Leo O'Brien, who retired as pastor of St. Vincent's, in 2005, after 34 years, will be celebrating his 90th birthday, April 22nd. So if you would like to send him a birthday card, we will give you his address, or you can bring it in next week, and I'll make sure that they get to him in time for the big day. Liturgical ministers and choir members, greeters, despite the obstacles of this past year, have made it possible to continue to have vibrant, well-organized, and celebrated liturgies. So there's a small gift for anyone who is, uh, fulfills any of those ministries in the parish hall. Please check the bulletin for a message from the <coughs> pastoral council and also for the, from the Zulo family. <coughs> and as always, please leave your worship aids on your chair. Volunteers are needed to wipe down the chairs and we exit by Madison Avenue unless we need to use uh, the elevator. And I will say the New York Times, well, the Center for Disease Control, and then it was written up in the New York Times, said that the best thing for keeping our surfaces clean are soap and water. So we've been doing a great job. Congratulations to all of you. Uh, birthdays, anniversaries to acknowledge. Kevin. Um, may you have a blessed week. Forty-eight years ago, when I was the first assigned here in this parish as the assistant, Father O'Brien was the pastor. At least he thought he was the pastor, <laughs> because Bishop McGinn was still living, the former pastor, and he had the pastor suite. The bishop did. And good old Leo hung in there all those years, so happy birthday. <laughs> Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing to the mountain, sing to the 